Here is the healing power of your imagination, by Neville Goddard, Chapter 1, Your Infinite Value. The aim of these discourses is to bring about a psychological change within you as an individual. Humanity, psychologically understood, is an infinite series of levels of consciousness. And individually you are what you are based on where you stand within these series. Consciousness is the only reality, and where you are consciously determines the circumstances of your life. Ancestors knew this great truth, but our modern masters are yet to discover it. There is only one substance in the world, which scientists call energy, while scriptures define it as consciousness. We've been told that the universe was caused by water, but if that were true it could only be made up of water. However, if the basic substance is energy or consciousness, it can manifest itself as steel, metal, wood, to name a few. When a man sees a variety of forms, he thinks of an endless amount of substances, but what he sees is only a change in the arrangement of that same basic substance, consciousness. Ephesians tells us that all things, when admitted, are made manifest by light. The word light mentioned here signifies consciousness. The state an individual admits within their consciousness is the cause of one man being rich and another poor. The poor man admits to being in a state of poverty by saying, I am poor, just as the rich man admits it by saying, I am rich. Everything you, as an individual, affirm to be, whether good, bad, indifferent, right or wrong, must manifest in your world because by affirming that state, you've given it your consent to come to life. There is only one cause, and that is consciousness. Your consciousness is the center from which your world reflects and resonates with the state you occupy presently. A state can be defined as everything you believe and conceive as true. So, if you want your world to change, you can determine what you want and accept and consent to it as true before you can change it. To arrive at a certain definition of yourself, you must begin by non-critically observing your automatic reaction to an event because your reaction defines your state. And you can, without moving from your chair, reconstruct your world by changing your level or state of being. You achieve this by observing without criticism how you respond to life. If you don't like the circumstances of your life, recognize the cause, be able to admit that circumstances are mere objectifications of your consciousness and your world will change. If you react to what is objectified, you are bound to a certain level of consciousness. But if you refuse to react, the bond is broken. Stop being conscious of anything unpleasant because every unpleasant thought further sinks you into a psychological marsh. Instead, identify with beauty, love, the Christ within you, and you will rise to infinite levels of your own being, thus changing the circumstances of your life. Your state of consciousness acts like a magnet, attracting life. Steel is a demagnetized state of a mass of rotating electrons, but when the electrons are directed in one direction, the steel is magnetized. You don't add anything to the steel to make it magnetic, nor do you remove anything to demagnetize it. This same principle is true for you. You can change your world by rearranging your thoughts and directing them in one direction. The realization of your desires. Observe your reactions in life, and any change in the arrangement of your mind, detectable by self-observation, will result in a change in your external world. It's important to learn to be passive towards what is unpleasant and unacceptable to you. In doing so, you awaken dynamism within yourself, and when you find your inner being, you'll discover that the qualities you condemn in others are actually within you. Then you'll know the secret of forgiveness because when you forgive yourself, others are forgiven. All things, not just some, are made manifest by light, and all that is manifested is light. As soon as you become conscious of a thought it manifests, it can only come into existence when you consent to its expression by becoming aware of it. The universe moves without reason, but with necessity, yet without its own reason. It moves under the necessity to manifest the mental arrangements of men. This teaching aims to awaken your light, and awakening begins with self-observation. If you secretly cherish living in the mud of automatic misery and condemnation, your world will reflect those feelings. But if you restructure your mind and live in the glorious feeling of harmony and love, your manifested world will change. If today you spend just five minutes objectively observing yourself, 
you'll be surprised by your own deception. It's a dreadful shock, I know, but any shock of this kind allows the light of consciousness in, and life is always an increasing illumination. As the light comes in, you become more and more aware of who you really are. There is only one cause for the phenomenon of life. By simply observing your own consciousness, you can discover the cause of what is happening to you. There's no greater tyrant than the belief in a second cause. Release yourself from this tyrant by remembering that the only substance, the only cause, is consciousness, and immediately change what you are conscious of. By observing only your reactions to life, you can discover yourself. And remember, as you react the way you do, the same things will be confirmed, because all that you admit is made manifest by your consciousness, and all that you manifest is your consciousness. Stop walking in the world of mud and living in its basement. Your soul is made of all that you consent to. Lose your soul at one level, and you'll find it at a higher level. Always examine yourself objectively, because as soon as you become critical, you automatically justify your reactions and associate yourself with the observed thing. Everything is individual security, and both collective security and salvation are terms closer to individuality. Learn to stand on your own feet, and not on the feet of a group. You can free yourself, and the only way to do so is to awaken the Christ to sleep within you. Think noble thoughts based on noble concepts, and they will yield excellent dividends and elevate your consciousness, thus transforming your world. Give yourself your own bread daily by giving yourself the chance to remember who you are. Never envy the good fortune of others. Simply appropriate it for yourself. Be transformed by renewing your mind and changing the ideas planted there because you cannot change your thoughts until you change the ideas from which they flow. Chapter 2. Do not take the name in vain. Your individual state of consciousness is your level of being and attracts all the events you encounter in life. As your reactions determine who you are, any change in your external world must be produced by your internal being. In the seventh chapter of the book of Mark, we are told, hear and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into them can defile them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. Let those who have ears hear. Thoughts are things. When you identify with a thought, it materializes into an act. If the thought is unpleasant, it defiles you. Wake up and only choose thoughts that contribute to the birth of your desire. You must constantly observe your dwelling place, because where you are psychologically is what you are. Your mood indicates your state, and you simply externalize the state you are in. The Upanishads, a class of Vedic treaties dealing with states, say that the soul imagines itself in a state. Taking upon oneself the results of that state does not mean imagining oneself in that state. Your soul is free from its results. When you perceive yourself in the situation of your answered prayer, you have entered that state, and your soul will take upon itself the results of it. If you do not engage in that state, you are free from its loving results. Accept an idea as truth, identify with it, and it will manifest in your world. But if you do not accept the thought and identify through feeling, you are free from its results. You must become very selective and learn not to associate with unpleasant thoughts. In the Book of Kings, it is said that those who enter the temple bring with them a little wine, as well as a bull or an ox. These are offered as sacrifices. These offerings for sacrifice are your body of suffering. The animals you must offer are called grievances. No matter the grievance, you have no right to carry it with you, and you cannot raise your consciousness until all your grievances have been shaken from the altar and sacrificed. Only when you abandon them will you find the sacred water. This sacred water is not a variety of the church, but the symbol of the twelve aspects of the spirit. When your mind is free from all its cobwebs, grievances, complaints, issues, the vessel of sacred water is placed within that of the bulls, and your disciplined mind serves you rather than you serving it. The bull symbolizes the wild mind and must be tamed, washed in the sacred water and clothed in a soft robe. When you enter the most sacred and bathe in these waters, your mind is cleansed of all critical thoughts and clarified. Begin now to associate your thoughts only with goodness so that what comes out of your mouth and mind will never contaminate you. I am 
is the self-definition of the infinite. Go and say that I am has sent you. I am is consciousness. I am is the sole power of the universe. Its power makes you alive. If you say I am sick, you are. If you say I am safe, you are. By feeling yourself in the situation of a given state, you can give yourself the results of that mental state. Everything comes to life from a state of consciousness, and without that state nothing can manifest, for you only awaken the state with which you are identified. Where you are psychologically is who you truly are. So if you find yourself feeling pity for yourself, stop and begin to feel happy. Otherwise, you'll identify with a state of self-pity and externalize it. Let the weak man say, I am strong. Don't wait to become strong before saying this. If you feel weak in any way, affirm I am strong, and if you persist in that affirmation, it will solidify within you. No one must take the Lord's name in vain, and his name is I am. The righteous man is aware of being the person he wants to be. He never sins. He simply knows the name, for to sin is to miss the desired state, and righteousness is attaining it. I will speak of it because he knows my name. Assume the consciousness of being who you want to be, and you will be saved from your present state. Your individual hunger can and will be satisfied when you correctly enter the desired state. This is done through the act of feeling. Feel happy, and you are aware of happiness. Feel married, and you have consciously moved into the state of marriage. The desired thing must be felt before it is possessed. Learn to say no to unpleasant thoughts instead of accepting them with perceived indifference, for a soul must imagine itself in the act to taste of the fruit of the state in which it acts. Remember, consciousness alone is the cause of the fruit you reap and the sole explanation for its existence. There is no one to blame but yourself for everything that has happened to you, is happening, and will happen, for these things cannot appear in your world unless you consent to them. Begin now to consent only to thoughts of love and fulfilled desires before their confirmation by your senses, and abandon the animal instinct to suffer and plunge into feelings of pain and self-pity. The psychological tongue is similar to the physical tongue. If someone disturbs you, turn away and keep the language of your mind away from the wounds of displeasure, for your small mental conversations are the producers of your future. Sacrifice your body of suffering by renouncing it and tame your mind. For it has been said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Clothe yourself with joy and good news, and you will walk among the most sacred, adorning your immortal body with love. There is a rhythm in the world that you cannot hear or see, and your aura is not like anyone else's. A hunting dog knows this. If two scents are similar, no hunting dog can find you but you are unique in a unique class with your own special aura radiating your level of being. Do not judge auras simply because you see another's aura through yours, and what you see is only your assumption about that person. Complacency is a curse. Blessed are those who thirst for righteousness. Control your imagination carefully and dare to stand and be heard. Andrew is the disciple who symbolizes this aspect of the mind. Pay attention to your thoughts and the feeling of fulfilled desire for you are not awake until your external self becomes placid and your internal self dynamic. Do not attempt to remove someone from misery. It has been said, let the filthy be filthy still. What does that mean to you? Follow me to me. The power of self-thinking has been given to man, and everyone is allowed to think for oneself. All things, when admitted into consciousness, are manifested, whether good, bad, or indifferent, by holding on to this teaching within you, you will never again feel the need to justify failure. Chapter 3. Desire As you are, so will God appear before you. The priest sees God as the head of all celestial and earthly records. To a judge, he is the greatest judge, always punishing. To another, God is the kind of boss he would like to be. You see, men always create their own image of God, God is the God of creation. Only truth is man's salvation. But the God you worship now will soon cease to be your God for the soul of his revelation. Eternally are his reshaping thoughts, and you will truly learn in his progress how to love and how to worship. Through these teachings, 
you will learn to develop your concept of God, for God does not change, only the ideas you hold about Him. Desire is your main spring of action, for you cannot move without desire. Ask yourself, what do you want of me? And state it, and the countless series of levels of consciousness are the result of satisfying that hunger. Health is a desire, a hunger that can be appeased when the idea, I'm healthy, is formulated in the mind. The same goes for wealth, peace, harmony, fame, for all are states of consciousness. Identify with the desired state, persist in it, for you and God are consequential. What you are conscious of becoming will manifest. The cross is the symbol of suffering. There is no physical cross on which a man was nailed, but a body of beliefs that a man carries. Unless you deny yourself and rise from your cross and follow me, you have no value in my eyes. Lift your cross and consciousness for your I am is the creator of your world. As an individual, you move and live in time, but your true being is eternity. Think of the vertical line of the cross as the line of being upon which there are countless states of consciousness. Time cannot make you better or wiser. In fact, time cannot do anything unless you change your state of being. So change is everything, on the vertical line where you move to higher or lower levels of your own being. For change is imminent. We speak of it as an infinite imminence, closer than close and sooner than now. The man you would like to be is imminent. He is closer than close, the ideal you dream of being sooner than now, and is brought into existence by a change in your reactions to life. In the book of Revelation, it has been said, I will give to each according to his work. The only work you are called to do is the work on yourself. Begin this work by observing your reactions to life. Remember, your future is not sent, it is already there. The timeline is complete, just as all events you might encounter as you ascend or descend to the level of your being. You change what will happen in your life. You are now restricted to a certain level. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. Break the cords of life that bind you to the state where you are now. Break these cords by changing your thoughts. You will find only corresponding change on the outside. Have you ever imagined what a world would look like where you have eyes too pure to see iniquity? Where you are pure love, pure tenderness, pure generosity? Aspire to these feelings and then examine your relationship with them. It is here amidst life's storms that you must use this law. If you identify with an unpleasant state, you will see yourself sinking into it. But you can rise from the cross by breaking your automatic and mechanical reactions to life and sacrificing your present state of being. This message is not here to bring peace, but a sword. It comes to set man against his brother, against his father, mother, and all members of his household. This is why I bring the words of truth, the word of God. This sword is sharper than a double-edged weapon because it is capable of piercing the soul and the spirit. I'm not suggesting that you turn against your enemies, but rather turn against the psychological ideas that govern your behavior and dominant mood, governing your actions and reactions to life. If, at this moment, your feelings are not noble, turn against them, for they are your psychological mother. You have been given new feelings in their place. You cannot change your way of thinking until you change your way of feeling, and all feelings come from ideas. The enemies of man are those within his own household, everything he accepts as true. This sword can pierce even the strongest souls and spirits. Your father, your I am, is spirit, and when you worship him you must do so in spirit and truth. Stand and consciously say to yourself, I am that. Everything you admit, everything you believe and accept as true, wise or foolish, forms the garments you wear, but it can be undressed and elevated to a higher level of being when you take up your cross and follow your imagination. Most of us do not have a goal. We want more than what we currently have. We want others to change, but we do not want to do anything to bring about that change, for we do not want to change ourselves. In the Revelation, John tells us, I will give to each according to their work. The gift is not given according to the work of another, but according to the work you do on yourself. This work consists of critically observing your reactions to life and how they bind you to a certain level of consciousness. Disassociate yourself from unpleasant thoughts and associate yourself with your goal. This is how you ascend to its level, for your idea is on that vertical line where you are. The scriptures say, 
Seek and you will find, and when you find it, you will be like him. I tell you that you will never see your desire satisfied until you become that desire. Those who seek love only manifest their absence of love because you should never seek what you already are. I am Mari, and you are also Mari, for we always conceive ourselves. All human life is the appeasement of Desir, and the Desir conceived as fulfilled is externalized. If you are not hungry enough to transcend your current state of consciousness, you will conceive nothing better. The more you are in love with the state you are in, the harder it will be to leave that state without the vertical line of states. Life would make no sense. The ancestors called these infinite series the staircase of Jacob. You do not build a staircase, you ascend it through self-discovery. When you think of another, you are merely living your opinion of them. If they seem kind to you, they are kind. If they seem stupid to you, they are stupid because they play the role you have assigned to them with your opinion. Similarly, if you desire them to change, you must change your opinion of them because they are only your externalized opinion. Where you are psychologically is who you really are. So associate only with the feeling that will bring about the realization of your desires. And may all your dreams be noble. Chapter 4. You Make Wine the purpose of the Bible is to elevate being to a higher level of consciousness. It starts at the state of Moses and the discovery of the I Am. Then, in the book of Isaiah, we are told, Come out of the Sabbath and delight in the Lord. Let us examine this thought to find its deepest meaning. Maintaining the Sabbath means ceasing all mental doubting within you because what you maintain mentally are your beliefs. When your mental feet touch the ground, their action is automatic and mechanical. By using your powerful consciousness, start now to break the mechanical shackles you've had in your life by changing your thoughts to match your fulfilled desire and observe the Sabbath. Twins, as mentioned in Scripture, symbolize your duality. Abel represents your inner self and Cain your outer self. A reversal in order occurs because in the New Testament, your true identity is revealed as Christ, your inner being, your hope of glory. While you walk the earth, you see people, as they want to be seen, pouring oil on their wounds. But if you don't, you're like the Pharisees described in Matthew 23, they preach to be seen by men. In the third chapter of the book of John, the story of Nicodemus is told, he was an intellectual man who believed that by observing the law of Moses, he could enter the kingdom of heaven. Yet he was told, you must be born again, born of water and the Spirit. Here we see the difference between intellect and wisdom. Observing the law of Moses is not enough. You must undergo a change in your level of being to acquire wisdom and be reborn. Your inner conversations are where your future growth lies, whether loving or unpleasant. This has been vividly conveyed to us in the book of Deuteronomy. Every time you scold, even if it's a fact in your mind, you are cursing it. Every time you do unto others, as you would have them do unto you, you are blessed in the deed. Water is the symbol of true psychology. Knowing the truth is not enough, you must act upon it, and at that moment, psychological water turns into wine. Start right now to observe all your unpleasant and negative thoughts and change them. As long as you do not separate yourself from the state from which these thoughts arise, they will continue to bring about the same experiences in life. Chapter 5 Seeing God St. Augustine once said, O oh my God, let me see you, and if dying is to see you, then let me die and behold your face. Yet, when we fell, God said to us, You cannot see my face and live, but I will pass my glory before you, and when I pass you will see my back, but my face you shall not see. This God is your wonderful I am, your consciousness that always proclaims, I am that I am. The power of imagination is the only power. It's your power to kill, to revive, to hurt, and to heal. It's your imagination that shapes light, does good, and creates evil. There is no other God. Man tends to believe in two powers, one good and the other evil. But I tell you, there is only one. The I am in man is the one that kills and gives life, curses and creates. Your consciousness of being is the only reality. The self-definition of an absolute state is, I am divine and this absolute state is God. 
your I am, is the one that cannot be seen. Matthew tells us, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The word pure in the preceding prayer comes from the Greek word kataros, which also means clean or clear. To be pure, the mind must be rid of all obstructions created by wrong traditional thinking. The heart must be cleansed of the belief in a second power. Only when this is accomplished will you be blessed because you will know that the only God is your true being. There is no power outside of you. It's the same power within you that does good and creates evil. Start now to free yourself from the belief in two powers, for only the pure in heart shall see God. The vast universe is nothing but a response to man's consciousness. If you believe that the self in another is the cause of your misery rather than your own self, then you have planted a tree in your mind that obstructs your vision and must be uprooted. We have been told that no man shall imagine evil in his heart. I'm not speaking of a physical organ, but the mind, the center or heart of the subject. When your heart is pure, you become a member of the order of Melchizedek. Read the story carefully, and you'll find that when Abraham slew the kings, all his negative and unpleasant ideas came back to find Melchizedek, the symbol of the I am, the being you truly are. Learn to discipline your mind, for only a disciplined mind can sustain the feeling of the fulfilled desire. If, after imagining, it doesn't manifest, it's because you haven't cut the cords that bind you to the level where you currently are. You must break your mechanical reaction to life to change the course of your life. The only purpose of this teaching is to give you courage and lift you upward in the vertical line of the cross. It's very important for you to learn to be non-critical of yourself, because if you're not, you'll justify your behavior, keeping you in your present state. But if you cease being critical, you'll cease the negative thoughts that keep you in your present state and move towards another. There are three ways to cleanse your mind of the trees of wrong traditional thinking and enable you to see God. These are non-critical observation, non-identification, and sacrificing the state you previously believed to be. Men seek to see God through small images, but God can only be seen through belief in power. Through non-critical observation, you will find your particular state. If you don't like the role the state requires you to play as revealed to you, cease reacting to it. Until you reach the point where you no longer react, you're not pure enough to see God. When you see Him, you'll know Him and be like Him. Where I am is always who I am, establishes an I am in you and not a multitude of me. The entrenched me, your belief in an external power to yourself, is a tree that must be uprooted from your mind. Start using this technique now and you'll realize each of your dreams, but first, you must have a dream, a desire for something, for desire is your jumping off point of action. Define your goal as if it were already accomplished. Where would you be physically? What would the world look like? Would your wife, husband, mother, father or friends be different? Feel their presence, see the joy expressed on their faces and hear their congratulations. Repeat this act until you feel the fulfillment. Having assumed the feeling of success, remain faithful to it, for your assumption contains all the plans and power needed to manifest it. Your desire may be for an improvement in your financial situation, your social circle, or a deeper understanding of your mission. The desire depends on you, but when you put this technique into practice, it will never disappoint you. The kingdom of heaven, with its many states, some pleasant and others not, is within you. The state capable of hurting or healing, killing or reviving, is within you. They are all completely finished psychological states, ready to manifest in your world. And if after entering a particular state you don't want to stay there, you can leave it through the same technique by which you entered. Through the act of assuming, it's very easy to feel sorry for yourself and very difficult to free yourself from this feeling. But you cannot enter another state until you do. No one can pluck out the wounds of self-pity or the trees of supposed second causes for you. You must pluck them out yourself. <coughs> you have been asleep, but when you awake you will be Christ, the power and wisdom of God. Start now to observe your reactions to life and don't allow yourself to identify with an unpleasant state. Sacrifice your petty pains, grievances and beliefs in second causes, then you will be blessed.
for you will be pure of heart and see God. Wake up, examine yourself, and you'll discover that the faults you see in others exist in you. Turn around and you'll find the Christ in you, which is your hope of glory. Chapter 6. All is Consciousness. You are blessed when your mental understanding has been widened by removing the trees of wrong traditional thinking, for only then will you know that all is consciousness, and consciousness is all. You will know that every second cause is a tyrant, and if you believe in an external power, you're fighting a lost battle. Emerson once said, Man becomes what he thinks, as all spirits build themselves beyond their own house. A world beyond your world, what you are you will see as such. Build a world as you would like it to be, a world beyond the visible world to you now. The world you desire exists and will reveal itself in great proportions when you surround your mind with all the spiritual essence, with the true image of yourself as you would like to be. Think of your world as a canvas, with images painted by the arrangement of your mind. Your I am consciousness is already arranged for you. There are as many patterns on your canvas as there are people walking the earth. Turn inward and proclaim that your desire exists. Feel yourself move into its center, then paint your canvas of consciousness. Everything is there at your disposal. Its reality depends on you and the intensity of your desire. Always seek to be, for your consciousness is the only cause of the phenomenon of your individual life. You might have imagined something that has never come to pass and feel like you failed. But I tell you there is only one cause for failure, the absence of the sensation of naturalness. It takes time for a supposition to become a fact, and a desire is fulfilled in proportion to the naturalness of the feeling of possession. If something doesn't seem natural to you, it's not of your nature. To ask in my name is to ask according to my nature or character. Thus, when you ask, you must feel as if you already have. You are what you seek, whatever your desire may be. When you pray, Believe that you have received and you will have it. It's important to feel in the fulfilled desire, for consciousness is the only reality, and all you see is the externalization of a state of consciousness. It's absurd to search for something before establishing its cause. An effect depends on the state of consciousness, and you cannot find the effect before being its own cause. If you don't have the naturalness of the desired state, you cannot externalize it, because consciousness is very observant. Ask yourself how long you have been aware of being what you want to be, to what extent you feel its reality now. Matthew tells us, O oh, perverse and faithless generation, how long must I stay with you? Do you have faith in what you are conscious of being? I hope so, because without faith it's impossible to achieve anything. It's the substance of the hoped-for thing and the cause of every phenomenon in life, the word perverse means deviating incorrectly, aimlessly, without purpose. When the latest headline or news bulletin can divert you from your desire, you are perverse and you fail. But if success is your aim, your mood must be lifted to the feeling of success and be so natural that you cannot depart from it. On the other hand, importunate means bold movement. If you were so present in your affairs, your boldness wouldn't allow you to accept proof from your senses when they deny your assumption but you would rearrange the substance called life into the pattern of your assumption. This world moves with the need to shape and manifest the arrangement of the individual mind. It's important to persevere until the accomplishment becomes natural for you. Changes begin to occur at the moment of naturalness. James said to the Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. Like James, you can wrestle all night with an idea, and ideas come from heaven to become flesh. If you don't take a no for an answer, but persist in the feeling of your accomplished desire, you will be blessed with its externalization. Scriptures speak of a man whose son was dead. When he approached the Son of God and asked him to bring the child back to life, it was granted to him. Your idea, whether it's success, health, love, money, or fame, is your child that is dead. But if you believe in its life and walk in the assumption of being successful, healthy or wealthy, if that's your desire, your sleeping child will rise from the state of death and live in your world. The parable speaks of a judge who was told, Have no fear of God or man. Considered within you is the judge who will give you everything you ask for 
if you are as persistent as the widow in the story. Coming at midnight, she persisted in her request until the judge granted her desire by saying, This woman troubles me. I will give her satisfaction, or she will wear me out with her continuous visits. When the light of consciousness does not shine in your accomplished desire, it's midnight. But if you illumine your desire with the light of your consciousness and persist, you will rediscover what you are conscious of. You always surround yourself with the true image of yourself, and what you are is the only thing you can see, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Observe your reactions to life, and you observe the being from whom you must separate, and thus you begin to identify with the state you have chosen. The separation is accomplished, but your assumption must be a sustained attitude. If, even for a moment, you lose the feeling, regain it, and if you lose it again, feel yourself back to the feeling. Until the state becomes so natural that your thought from that state is normal, the great failure of most true students is that they build perpetually but postpone their occupation. When you enter your desired state, feel its presence surrounding you like an answered prayer, then become so united with the state that your thoughts flow from it. Persist in seeing your world from that state, and it will become a fact. You and you alone determine when the state externalizes. If your mind is so disciplined that it cannot be turned or diverted, the desire of your heart will be reflected on the screen of space. But if you believe in a secondary power, that belief will cause delay. Your consciousness is the power of speech. It's divine without division. There are not two I am's, but one I am residing on many levels. Desire quietly now struggle like Jacob, but when the struggle surpasses the desire, as Israel was born, you may think your name is John Brown or Mary Smith, but your true name is I am, and your dominant state is the divine nature. Divorce yourself from your state of mind and assume a new nature. Persist in your new relationship, and you will give life to the child as a new phenomenon witnessing your creativity. I am internal only if you lack boldness and constantly return to the state you are trying to divorce from. Failure will occur. Desire is a hidden identity. What you want, you already have. If you recognize it as a fact that you are already what you want to be, and do not deviate but keep your boldness in walking in the state of realization that dominates you now, no power on earth can prevent you from expressing it. But you must feel right in the situation of the answered prayer, for only by believing that you already have it will it appear. The one who prays successfully is the springboard of action, and the one who grants the prayer there is no other being who grants it. The one who receives the answered prayer is the one who grants it by the act of ordering his mind. Learn to rearrange your mind, and if you find yourself walking in the field of prayers without response, turn around and walk in the field of realization. And remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The only reality and substance is consciousness, from which all prayers have their beginning and end. The entire book of Hebrews is dedicated to faith. Faith endures as seeing the invisible. Faith is the substance of things expected. Good news was given to us, but it did not prosper because it was not mixed with faith. The good news is the accomplished desires. If desire is not mixed with faith, it has no validity, for faith is the consciousness of the reality of desire fulfillment. You will see that creation is finished, and we become aware only of larger and larger parts of it. If you limit yourself and your physical senses that contradict all your desires, then faith will be unknown to you. But faith will make real what is invisible. The being you would like to be, even if invisible, will reveal itself and become visible to all when you walk in the faith of its reality. Chapter 7 Uprightness If you have a goal and fail to achieve it, you have sinned because you fell short in your desire. But if you have no desire, you are incapable of sinning. The upright man, aware of having already reached his goal, cannot sin. In the book of Daniel, we are told to break our sin through uprightness. It has nothing to do with a church or ritual because uprightness is correct thought. In the book of Genesis, the story told is about Jacob's desire to increase his wealth by focusing on a dream. He contemplated the speckled lambs and stripes on the goats and cattle. He then said, I will hold fast to my uprightness and I will not let it go. Then my uprightness will answer me in times to come. 
Follow Jacob's example. Fix your gaze on your dream with controlled imagination and see what you want to see. Believe in your vision and your faith will make it solid and real in your manifest world, even sitting in your chair. You can assume the state of consciousness you want to possess, even if your reason and external senses deny its reality. Then, like Jacob, you can say, my uprightness will answer me in times to come. Jacob knew he could not turn to his new state and maintained a consciousness of having what reason denied, including the laws of genetics. He could achieve his goals. God the Father is not a man but the dominant idea you serve. The enemies of this idea are those in your own household, your own thoughts. Maintain a dominant idea in your consciousness and in a way you don't grasp your uprightness correct thought will cause the manifestation of the desired state in your world. A Pharisee is one who conforms to all rules created by man, one who strictly observes the external purification law of Leviticus. We are told that Unless your uprightness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. But seek first the kingdom of heaven and its uprightness, and all these things will be given to you. True uprightness is consciousness. We confuse the word and seek uprightness as a thing, but the consciousness of being is the magnet that attracts a thing to itself. Imbue your consciousness with the feeling of being the man or woman you want to be, and your uprightness will bring it to you. You cannot possess crystallization unless you adopt it. When you have this internal conviction, you become purer and nobler. Christ taught rectitude in his law of identical harvest, saying that, as a man sows, so shall he reap. Psychologically speaking, a state of consciousness sown in the mind will be reaped in external events. As long as you continue to sow your present state of consciousness, you will continue to encounter similar events in your life. Walk consciously with the sensation of your accomplished desire and never sin by losing the experience of fulfillment, but you cannot return to your previous state. We are all lost prodigal sons, but it is said that when he returned to himself, he went back to his father's house and at that moment he was given a fat calf and a ring. When you observe who you are in consciousness and return to yourself by turning back to your father, the desired state will be given to you. Observe your reactions to life and discover where you are psychologically. If your reactions are unpleasant, you're walking in the mood feeding the pig, but when you return inside to the father of all life and enter the desired state by assuming its fulfillment, your actions will be loving, persist, and you will step out of the mud into the kingdom of the accomplished desire. There is no such thing as honorable indignation because man's anger cannot work properly. Nothing is as unpleasant as honorable indignation, as correct consciousness. My goal is to be someone with an expanded consciousness because I am a teacher and I must grow as a teacher. This is my aim and I must remember it morning, noon and night. I must persist in this state until it manifests in my world. There is a story of a blind little girl who had five brothers. The brothers, relying on their senses, went out into the world and lost their way. Meanwhile, the little girl, unable to trust her senses, wove a golden rope, tying one end to her finger and the other to the sun, and she never lost her way. You can also learn to trust the light of consciousness by holding on to the rope, which is your goal, and not merely relying on yourself by consciously walking as the one you want to be. No power in the world can prevent you from reaching your goal when you are conscious of having already achieved it. You have been told to seek first the kingdom and its rectitude, and all things will be given to you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Turn inward, and you will find the power that produces what nature and your external senses deny. Test yourself by controlling your thoughts, seeing only what you want to see, and listening only to what contributes to the realization of your world as you want it to be. If you continue to control your world in your imagination until one sensation dominates all other ideas, your correct consciousness will respond and your dream will become your reality. But if you do not feel fulfilled, you can easily be diverted and lose your way. The teachings of the Bible are to elevate you higher and higher in consciousness until the rebirth occurs. There is only one purpose in life, and that is to ascend higher and higher in the vertical barrier of the cross. Knowing the state you want to express, walk as if you were expressing it now. 
No man who has put his hand to the plow and looked back, once you have moved to a new state, do not look back. The old state or you will return like Lot's wife. She looked back and was transformed into a pillar of salt, which is a preserver. The moment you look back, your previous state pulls you back in because everything exists preserved in your imagination and ready to be occupied. The kingdom of heaven is the highest degree of consciousness, a step higher than where you are now, and each higher level is attained by a change of attitude for the good. There is no problem that cannot be solved by a change of consciousness, and what requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect can never be produced without that state. It is foolish to wait for security while being conscious of insecurity. On the other hand, you cannot be in insecurity if you consciously walk in assurance you don't have to strive to get what you want. All you have to do is walk in the consciousness of what you have, because an assumption, even if false, if persistent, will actually change. Do not seek to be a better man, but the best in something. Most metaphysical students have no goal claiming that God knows what is best. But I ask you, how can that be when you and God, your Father, are one? Human nature wants the thing to come first and the belief afterward. That is why I tell you that you must assume the consciousness of already having or being what you desire before the sign of what you have appears. Signs follow. They do not precede. Seek the conscious feeling of having already achieved your goal, and the sign that you already have it will follow. You do not get things and then become right. Rectitude is always a correct observation. Claim the level on which you are now, dying to your present state, for in your father's house there are many mansions. Let go of your present abode and reach for what you seek. Chapter 8. The Perfect Will of God Understood psychologically, humanity has an infinity of levels of consciousness, and the individual is what he is based on where he stands at those levels. In the book of Romans, Paul says, Not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, to test what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God, in other words, do not look at the external world and call it reality, but break its enchantment by transforming your thoughts. But you cannot change your thoughts before changing your ideas, because it is from your ideas that you think. Remember that your level of consciousness attracts life and is the sole cause of the phenomenon you observe. To be conscious is to do the will of God, whose name is I Am. By always being aware of what you are aware of, that is what you are. Think on an infinite scale of values as I am with your desired state just where you are. O oh, God speaks to you through the language of desire. When you desire to elevate yourself, it is God speaking to you, calling you to surrender to the feeling of already being what you want to be. Let go of fear, limitation, and doubt, and submit yourself to God's will. A simple assumption will elevate you to the level where your ideas are identified and where you will begin to see the world differently. This is where self-observation comes in. Do not observe your external world, but your reactions to it. When someone else annoys or offends you, look inside, at the ego listening uncomfortably and expressing itself. It's hard to believe, I know, but you are solely responsible for your discomfort. A lady I know thought her boss was an impossible monster to please. She had formed this opinion of him, and this invisible and inaudible opinion spoke all day, causing actions and words from her boss that made her uncomfortable. Being a funny girl and wishing to change her personal feeling, she listened to her boss compliment her, and she thanked him. In the world where she found herself reverting to her old habit of criticizing him, she interrupted that thought and replaced the recording with praise, gratitude, and congratulations. Within 24 hours, the new recording manifested. When she resigned a year later, her boss begged her to stay and told her that if she ever wanted to return, the doors would always be open. Your internal dialogues are the food of all your future actions, morning, noon, and night. When you catch yourself whipping yourself, consciously break the usual pattern by creating new thoughts, making a new recording so that it manifests in your future. God's will is I am. His will is always manifesting because it is the power that resurrects and gives life. There is no transformative power in time, only in the moment. If you encounter difficulty or otherwise, look within yourself, for it is you calling and speaking to yourself through thought. Listen carefully to what you tell yourself 
and discover where the difficulty resides, allow me now to define the being or the soul. It is what you believe, feel, think, and perceive. You can consent to believe that you have been mistreated, that you are stupid, or that their cruelty makes you unhappy. If you consciously consent to this, your level of being attracts into your life, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. Your soul cannot be changed by joining churches, synagogues, or groups. You must turn to the soul, the inner self that you know, for it is the one that attracts what mistreats you and controls every little detail of your existence. If you harbor a hidden affection for your conflicts, you cannot be helped. But when you consent to be otherwise, then you can change. First, submit to God's will by knowing your ideal. Then, cling to it by imagining what you would physically do if your desire were a fact. Once that is clearly defined, repeat that act again and again until you feel so immersed in it that its realization dominates your mind. When the idea is firmly anchored and your thoughts freely flow from what you see, you will see a change in your external world. Become pure of heart by purging your mind of belief in powers external to yourself. Believe that consciousness is the only reality and introduce yourself to a new state of consciousness, for your world is your home, your externalized state of consciousness. Cleanse your home by observing your thoughts. When you start doing so, you will discover that most of your thoughts are unpleasant. But when you learn to passively think about those that disturb you, your thoughts will lose their discomfort, and with a joyful and grateful mind, you will ascend Jacob's ladder from the self to the kingdom of love. When you have clearly defined your desire, anchor it so firmly that your habitual thoughts stem from the new state. This teaching is not for the weak or for those seeking to escape life or wanting to point fingers and blame someone else. To find the Christ within you, your hope of glory, you must want to prove yourself to yourself. I tell you, it is yourself that calls all men and manifestations to you. Life is easy when you can blame someone, but I invite you to pray not for an easy life, but to become a strong man, one who bears witness to his thoughts. That is the cause of your unhappiness, not someone else. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you will taste the good and acceptable word of God, it would be acceptable for you to be raised to a higher level. It is the will of God that will not return until it has executed and accomplished all the designs of your mind. You do God's will when you identify with your desire, and if you believe in your rectitude, you are upright, and your world will reflect your uprightness. But if you do not believe, you will lose your way and die in your sins. The only escape from life that matters is a radical psychological transformation of oneself, achieved by identifying yourself with the desire, then changing your thoughts until its effect possesses your mind and yourself comfortably resides in the new state. Remember that your level of being attracts life, and unless that level changes, your story will remain the same. Let your present state die, and by identifying your being at a higher level, truly try. It is not difficult to do. Free yourself from the grip of past wrong relationships by reliving experiences and altering them. Do this by imagining the experience in your mind and saying what you would have said and done if it had happened at that time. Let this corrected image enter your subconscious and resolve not to make the same mistake again through repetition. This technique will extract from you all feelings of hatred, resentment and other emotional disturbances rooted in your memory. And as you free yourself from these destructive feelings, you will free yourself from their power to attract disease and erroneous results to you. Body relaxation with more mental peace and concentration on the desired object is equivalent to achieving the goal. Anxiety has no creative power. In the school of consciousness, originating from the entity, it provides the power for your experiences in time. So prove yourself because in this teaching, there is no room for failure. Chapter 9. Be Doers of the Word In the book of Hebrews, Paul tells us to rest in the Lord. Why? Because the man who rests in the Lord is transformed into the image in which he rests. If my goal is to be a good teacher, and I rest in that feeling, I will be transformed into that image. Unfortunately, most states in which men rest are negative. Feeling hurt is easy, 
resting in that offense until that state becomes natural. You may condemn the state and believe others are the cause, but through your feelings of hurt, you will transform into the image of the state you condemn. And if someone seems to cause your discontent, remember there is no other. The state in which you rest causes you to hear silent and invisible conversations. Even if the words are heard by you alone, they act as a magnet and attract the circumstances of your life to you. Be doers of the word and not only hearers, deceiving your selves. In each encounter I share with you the knowledge gained through personal experience, but I cannot force you to put this knowledge into practice. As a teacher, I hope for results, but as students, I encourage you to test this truth, for if it is true, it will prove itself. Future actions. Always loaded with mental conversations with imaginary beings, become aware of your thoughts, be selective, and make your internal conversations positive. For the mechanical imagination is omniscient. The awakened imagination is positive and noble. Tonight, choose someone you love and rearrange your opinion of them. Engage in mental conversations with this person based on this new premise and you will become a doer of words. If you do not, you are merely a hearer deceiving yourself. This teaching is to awaken the active and dynamic being that you truly are, dormant. Your thoughts are negative and passive and cannot change until you critically observe your reactions to life. If you are honest with yourself, you will find an internal being of which you will not be proud, a monster that must be tamed. Tame this monster by filling your mind with positive thoughts and the joy of accomplishment, and you will transform this monster into a being of love. Get into the habit of observing your reactions to life. Give yourself your daily bread by giving yourself the ability to no longer react negatively. Become a doer by recognizing a negative thought, breaking it, and immediately shifting to a good thought. All your offenses, discomforts, self-pity, and belief that others are the cause of your suffering are animals that must be sacrificed on the altar of consciousness. By abandoning all negative feelings, choose the dwelling, the state you wish to enter, and enter that state. The law that brings poverty to one brings wealth to another. Let the weak say I am strong and the poor say I am rich, for only what you affirm within yourself can be externalized. Feel secure by saying I am safe and safety will manifest. But if you do not feel yourself in the desired state, you will always be exempt from its results because what demands a state of consciousness to produce its effect will never be produced without such a change in consciousness. You must feel right in the situation of your prayer answered, then live and act in that conviction. If you do not, you will never know the results of that state. Your fortune or misfortune in life has come from your state of consciousness. There is no other cause. Have the courage to accept this, then become a doer, and you will be blessed in all your undertakings. Start now to be aware of what you want to hear yourself say and receive from mechanical and unconscious impressions. What you hear must be filtered through who you are and who you are is what you hear. Kind thoughts stem from kind ideas created by a kind person so you can be kind to others, generous, forgive others. An assumption is called the crown of all mysteries, and each assumption is made solely by you. The world you see depends not so much on what is out there, but on the assumption you make when you look at it. The talent embedded within you is your power to assume consciously. Do not bury it by sleeping with your daily reactions. They are negative and mechanical in everything you see and hear. Awake, become aware of what you do and say and rise in consciousness, controlling your thoughts and making them positive, kind and filled with satisfaction. Chapter 10 the pearl of great value. When you possess the mind of Christ, you are in possession of the pearl of great value. This pearl is imminent, closer than proximity and faster than the present, for the pearl of great value is your own wonderful human imagination. You have always possessed this thought, but like any possession, unless you know it is yours and have the will to use it, it does not exist for you. Believe me, everything in the world was first conceived in your imagination the house you live in, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, as well as your friends, family, enemies and strangers in the street were imagined before they were materialized. 
Now it is time to control your human imagination and govern it with love. I encourage you to awaken to the discovery that everything you seek in time is contained within you. There is only one mind with countless levels of consciousness. Your level determines where you are and what you are, for you are what you think. This mind is not something separate from you, but it is your own loving imagination. The Father of the Bible is the only redeeming power of the universe that can save you from your present state or draw you to it. Christ is defined in Scripture as the power of God and wisdom, as well as your hope of glory. All things are made by this power, and without it nothing that was made was made. For Christ, who is your own wonderful human imagination, is yourself. By looking with the human eye you see an outer world, seemingly independent of your perception, but when you look at the world through the me of imagination, you understand its significance. Look within yourself and prove to yourself, and you will discover that you are your own saviour. Then you will begin to assert the supremacy of the human imagination, to cease to submit to the dictates of the world and to give life to your dreams. A tamed man is a self-disciplined one. Tame yourself by observing yourself. If you waste your energies on negative emotions, then discipline yourself out of the mud and mire in which you have lived and risey with your disciples to a state of joy and the body of love. Do this and you will have found the pearl of great price. In this world, you seem to be a man or woman of flesh and bone. Your father, mother, sisters and brothers are known. But I tell you that you are far greater than the greatest of men on earth. For you are Jesus Christ. Imaginative love sleeps in your body of flesh and bone. Awaken this love by proclaiming that your thought is Christ. Claim your pearl of great price, for it is the key that will unlock the treasure, the house of heaven. With your thought as Christ, you will find that you are no longer capable of thinking unpleasantly. Negative thoughts will vanish, and you will have no desire for revenge. The Bible is your biography for you are Jesus, the great Jehovah of the Old Testament, who finds fulfillment in the new by using man's thought. You are currently asleep. It is time to awaken the moorings of the thought of man that says, I can, I have been, I will be, and to affirm your divine heritage, which is the Spirit of God, saying, I am. Nothing is impossible to God, and nothing is impossible to you when you love being the Spirit of God. This world is like a machine where its actions and reactions are automatic. Separate yourself from this thinking machine and use your wonderful human imagination to rise to ever higher levels of your being. If you dislike the events of your life, change them by controlling your imagination. When you know what you want, ask yourself where you would sleep if you had it. How would you look? Would a friend be happy for you? With the answers to these questions filling your mind, sleep in your desired place, see the world from that privileged point of view, and hear your friends rejoice. Now that your desire is a fact, believe in Christ, the power that will put all things under your yoke, and it will be granted to you. Remember, there is no all-powerful destiny to which we must submit. You also do not have to accept the ordinary life of the world. Turn to being, claim your pearl of great price, and remember that, what seems to be is for those for whom it seems to be. This is productive of the most terrible consequences for the one for whom it seems to be, even storms, despair and eternal death. For William Blake in his poem Jerusalem makes this promise, but divine mercy goes beyond and redeems man in the body of Jesus. Chapter 11. The author is Rembrandt. Do you have a purpose in life, a goal for yourself? If so, begin to rise to its level through the act of autonomy. Do not seek to become a better man or woman, but rather transcend your current level by being better at something. Your goal must be so important that you cannot forget it, and your thirst to externalize it must be so intense that you cannot let go of that thought until it materializes. The scriptures tell us, Many are called, but few are chosen. The word chosen means separated, selected, decided upon. Each day you have the opportunity to choose a new idea to enter into a new state from which countless emotions and thoughts will arise. However, for the purpose with which you wish to be identified, only a few emotions and thoughts are chosen. Select the emotions and thoughts you want to express and enter into your desire through the act of feeling. 
In chapter 11 of Mark, it is said to the two disciples, Go into the village, and you will find a colt tied, on which no one has sat. Untie it, and bring it to me. If someone asks why you are doing this, say that the Lord has need of it. Ride it, and go to Jerusalem. Now, the animal found on every path is not a colt, but the predominant permanent emotion within the individual. Wishing to express a new emotion, you might find it challenging, but you will always find your emotions tied to life's pathways. If you have never felt secure, you may not be able to ride the emotion of security for more than a few seconds at a time. But the important thing is to try, as a controlled imagination can ride any emotion. In the city of peace, the incarnation of the ideal state, one emotion is correct or incorrect in relation to the desire. If you encounter difficulty, associate yourself with your desire. If the feeling is natural, correct, and you persist in your affirmation, it will become reality. Sometimes even when your goal seems natural, you might entertain some doubts that divert you from your objective. If that happens, do not condemn yourself. Simply return to that emotion and ride it. For the beast must be ridden until you and it become one. Establish the feeling of importance, security or dignity within yourself, for your consciousness is the only reality. What you are conscious of being at this moment is what you are. If you want to be other than what you are now, remember that the desired state is as real as the state you are conscious of now. Enter into the new state by becoming aware of being that. Persist, find the sensation of the new state and ride it. The scriptures urge man to remember by associating with his objective and walking in its direction. Only when you discipline yourself can you embody your objective. In chapter 11 of Mark, this statement is made, What things silver ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And wherever you are praying, forgive, as you fulfill a desire and forgive another, by finding the quality you desire in another and revealing it within yourself. Then locate your sensation of desire to express somewhere. When you do this, you have risen to the state of your prayer answered. Now prayer is conditioned by the belief that it is answered. Desire is a springboard, and by remaining in your desire, you may find the springboard wobbles on the ground and quivers beneath your feet. But if you persist in being conscious of having realized your desire, even if your reason and external senses deny it, what you are conscious of will become your reality. Tonight create a loving goal for yourself and feel its fulfillment. Associate yourself with that sensation by becoming aware of it. Do it, and you will have been blessed and blessed by God, who is your own being. Say to yourself, I and my Father are one. Your inner being is what men call God. It is never too far nor too near, for it is your own wonderful consciousness. All things when admitted into consciousness are manifested by the light, but something must be admitted first. If you are conscious of being struck, the thought will self-manifest and you will be struck. If you feel insecure and persist in that state, you will sink into the depths, for all that is manifested is an externalized consciousness. What is the dominant thought in your mind right now, regardless of what it is? You have consented to it, but you do not need to perpetuate the thought that enters the mind and can infect you. You must consent to every thought, whether it contaminates or blesses you, for it to be valid. But every thought will manifest. The state in which you currently reside was just a thought before you entered it. Similarly, the state you desire now can be easily externalized, Rise to the challenge, articulate your objective, and raise yourself in consciousness to its fulfillment. Believe it to be real, for everything is possible to a thought. Remembering is recalling your objective. So, throughout the day, ask yourself where you are psychologically. Your reality resides in a psychological city where you can walk in the meadow, the valley, or the mountaintop. Choose today the state in which you wish to enter, feel its mood, and become aware of its fulfillment. Walk confidently in the assumption, even if your reason and senses deny it, your persistence will make it a fact. You are entirely imagination, the total sum of your reactions in life. It is the sole cause and explanation of the events you will face. If you do not like your world, change your reaction to it. Life will become easier when you are blunt with yourself and become aware of your reactions to what has been created by you 
and is reflected back to you. Choose to react only positively. Positive thoughts produce positive effects. When you look at the world differently, your consciousness will change and so will your future events. Your desire is always ready to incarnate, but as desire alone, it is incapable of birth. It must have human kinship. You are the human imagination that scriptures call Mary. Thus, you are capable of conceiving an idea and giving birth to it without the aid of any man. Man is called God's mold, your I am is God the Father, and you, like Mary, conceive a desire of God keeping your secret within you. Walk true to your concept, and you will reap its fruits. Each is Mary from the Bible, their names mean of the water, the psychological truths of mysteries wash all literal concepts from your mind. You are baptized and born of the water. So, as long as you remain true to one desire, you will be the virgin tied to what is conceived by the Holy Ghost, the sacred desire. Chapter 12. Your Destiny Love is the only real power, and your power is proportional to your love. When scriptures speak of the violent storm in the kingdom, they do not refer to violent characters, but to the power of love that gives the strength to rise to a higher level of consciousness. There is no ultimate destiny understood psychologically. Life is eternal. It is man's appeasement, whose strength is desire. Man rises on the trampoline of his desire with every level of the vertical line of the cross within him, so well organized that it will propel you through desire to higher levels of himself. Like all true masters, I teach the art of overcoming the violence that characterizes the current level of human being. We have progressed in many ways compared to our ancestors, but we have remained as violent as them. My wish for you is to break your violence, your negative nature, for if you desire it, you will rise in consciousness and find your waiting destiny. Every moment in time offers you the opportunity to test your ability to overcome violence by assuming that consciousness is the only reality and that there is nothing else but the consciousness you have of it. In this assumption you will find the only cause of the phenomenon of life. Your reactions to life define you, and as long as they remain as they are, your life will remain the same. Your world is but a projection of your state of consciousness. Consciousness is the sole substance and cause of the phenomenon of life. Therefore, it is impossible to change an event until it has been changed in consciousness. Everything you are conscious of, whether good, bad or indifferent, is projected into your world through your consciousness of self. If security is your goal, you must establish a consciousness of security so strong that you can feel it and say from within, I am secure. You are free to consent to violence and harm or to security and mental peace. Everything you consent to by becoming aware of it will belong to you. Your goal is always just above the state in which you currently find yourself. Throughout the day, ask yourself if you are conscious of your goal. You will discover how close or far you are from it. If you are not conscious of being secure, proclaim that you are, persist, and perhaps tomorrow as you observe your day, you will find your consciousness growing. All you need to do is change your attitude after clearly defining your goal. Sincerely observe your inner conversations and your reactions in relation to it. When your thoughts and reactions are disciplined, your self will lift you to a higher level and the realization of your goal. Your inner man should not be condemned but awakened, which you achieve by awakening yourself. When you rise in consciousness, you take all men with you. Think of your wonderful human imagination as the limitless vertical line of the infinite cross, with time as the cross section. You are free to climb the cross, but you cannot rise until you deny your actions. Christianity is a way of living with your mental eyes wide open. Embrace Christianity by becoming conscious of what it is. If you dislike what you find in life, rearrange your thoughts by changing your consciousness. Mold the state you desire and take hold of it in your mind. This is how you transform being. When you anchor to your desired state, observe how the world transforms itself into the ideal that you hold in your consciousness. The place where you stand is sacred ground, for you are the temple of the living God. Cleanse your mind from the trees of traditional thought, become pure in heart, and you will see that consciousness is everything, and everything is consciousness. You will discover that the state you are conscious of is the manifested state. 
no matter how many arguments justify acts of violence, do not accept them. If you do, you contribute to the state, and it's a state you do not wish to experience. The story of Jesus entering the temple and clearing it of merchants and moneylenders, saying, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves, is not a material temple. You are the temple of the living God. The Bible is an autobiography. Thieves have taken your house of prayer by placing false values within it. Free your mind from all beliefs in external causes and reinstall the only true value of consciousness, the only real power, love. Chapter 13. Your Personal Autobiography The Bible, the most wonderful and misunderstood book in the world, is your personal autobiography. It is not a compilation of historical events, as your teachers teach, and its writings have never been attempted to be interpreted in that manner. The persons that appear there have never existed, and the events have never occurred on earth. The Bible speaks of the heaven within you and the earth outside. Its story begins, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The light mentioned here comes from the heaven within you. The light that shines upon the earth is the light of your consciousness and shines from within you. The outer man called the earth is dark, while the inner man called heaven is the being that was in the beginning with God and was God. The one who fell asleep is your autobiography. The Bible tells how you are raised from your present level of being to a higher level. In the Old Testament, we find the Pentateuch, the first five books, as Moses' law. These books were written in 500 BC, while the latest date in the New Testament is AD 170. The first known New Testament excludes the Epistle to the Hebrews, and Peter's book, and John is the one that speaks doubly, that nothing can be received from the Lord. Also, we have the Apocrypha, consisting of Christian writings excluded from the Protestant and Jewish Old Testament. These writings present four bibliographic scenes of a principle rather than that of a man. It took 900 years for the Bible to reach its current form. So, when you read it, always keep in mind that you are speaking of the kingdom of heaven within you. You are speaking of a revelation of an eternal principle called Christ, which is your hope of glory. All the characters recorded in the scriptures are aspects of your mind that you will discover when you fulfill your destiny, which is to fulfill the scriptures within you. No man called Moses ever wrote any commandment on stone. Instead, the stone means the literal truth. The man of literal mentality lives first, and certain laws were given to him to live, blocking psychological truth. As soon as you see things outside as facts, your mind is blocked, and you are unable to recognize their psychological meanings. But when you become hungry for truth and start applying the law, the Spirit of God will move upon your psychological ocean of understanding, and your life will take that truth, the water, and turn it into wine. In this state of Moses, the true name of God will be revealed to you. Take His name, your I Am, as your rod of understanding, and strike thee. Stone of literal truth with it, and the psychological water will turn into wine by practicing my words. You will convert the psychological water of truth that I have given you into the Spirit's wine. Now, the garments spoken of in the Scriptures are of the Spirit, not of the body. John the Baptist is described in the third chapter of Matthew as the one called Elijah. In the second book of Kings, it is said that he wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. Skin and hair are the most external things that man possesses. John the Baptist represents the outer man who has not yet clothed himself internally. Jesus is the inner man. He wears the distinct garment given from above, and those who wear his garments are always found in the house of the king. The New Testament teaches a complete and radical transformation of being and is called the Renaissance. But John the Baptist calls it the repetition and urges us to change our thought about the kingdom of heaven. It has been said that he lived in the wilderness with wild animals. Well, you are John. Living in the wilderness, when you have no direction by yourself and rely on your animal emotions to act, but when you begin to tame your animal instincts and discipline them, 
strength will come from within, and you will be baptized with the water of truth. In a parable, Matthew compares the kingdom of heaven to a sower who sows his seeds in different types of soil. The sower spoken of here is not an external being to you. You are the sower, and the seed is your wonderful human imagination. It is God the sower who said, Let us make man in our image, and then fell asleep and annexed the brain of the outer man as the seed for his redemption, as Adam or the red earth. Man is the psychological earth, where the kingdom of heaven is planted. In the parable it is told to us that when someone hears the word, but does not understand it, the wicked one comes and steals what was planted in their heart. But the one who hears with understanding reaps fruits and produces a hundredfold. Another parable is told comparing the kingdom of heaven to a man who, having sown good seeds in his field, fell asleep, and his enemy came and sowed weeds. These weeds are false teachings planted in the mind, false beliefs and concepts that can be bound and burned. When you turn inward and discover the truth and the kingdom of heaven, that is yourself. In the eleventh chapter of Genesis, the story of the Tower of Babel is told with the stone of literal truth and bricks of man-made concepts. Before the construction was erected, there was only one language and few words, but during the construction confusion reigned and soon no one understood each other's language. This tower exists today as small mystical groups hidden in the world. You have no enemies except those within your own household making true or false teachings. You believe that your security depends on the money you have in the bank, or that your health depends on the pills you take, or even that your happiness depends on another. In reality, you have built your own Tower of Babel, but I tell you that your consciousness of being is the only reality of the state in which you find yourself, and all the enemies of that state are within you. In his Beatitude, Matthew tells you that your state of being is blessed when clothed in gentle garments, for when you wear the seamless garments of imagination, you are free to ascend higher and higher towards the Garden of Eden within you. You are the gardener of your mind where you plant the seeds of your own selection. Like the man of imagination, become aware of being what you have planted, and your harvest will be multiplied a hundredfold. For you always become what you contemplate. In his sixteenth chapter, Matthew tells the story of the Pharisees who, unbelieving, asked for a sign from heaven. Here we are told to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. They are not men, but attitudes of the mind. If you believe that you must live in the right neighborhood, know the right people, have the right skin color, or be at the right place and time, your attitude is that of the scriptures called Pharisaic. Be mindful of this kind of thought, for the way to the highest level of being is always internal and never external. Mark tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls who finds one of great value. He sells all he has and buys it. As long as you cling to a thought of something external to your mind, you do not have enough money to buy the pearl of great value. You must be willing to sell all beliefs in something external to being. The path to the kingdom always ascends and is always inward. You cannot tread this path wearing garments made of skin and hair. You must be clothed in your wedding garment that is always woven from within. Again, we are told that the kingdom of heaven is like a net cast into the sea that gathers all kinds of fish, good or bad. In your life, the good ones are placed in vessels and the bad ones are cast away. Become discriminating, carefully select your thoughts and reject those that are negative or unpleasant. Allow only what is good to fill your mind and you will be a good fisherman. In this same 13th chapter of Matthew, the question is posed. Have you understood this? It is my prayer that each of you must answer as they have and say yes. It has been said not to put new wine into old wineskins, for the wineskins will burst and the wine will spill, destroying the wineskins. Instead, put the new wine into new wineskins, and thus both will be preserved. The old thoughts, the traditions of men, the beliefs in a power external to being, are the old wineskins that must be burst to allow the beliefs to spill and be destroyed. A new wine, gained by the fulfillment of God's promise within, must be placed in the new wineskins of your consciousness, and thus both will be preserved. Man does not evolve externally, 
There is only one presence, one essence in man called Christ, defined as the power of God and your hope of glory. This power can be awakened if you take God's word. If you are not constrained by the belief in an external power to being, awaken, abandon all false beliefs, and clothe yourself with the gentle garments of an internal attitude involving the realization of your dream. The Bible, from beginning to end, is the psychological story of your soul, and it tells you that the first thing you must do is change your thinking. I bring you a new idea regarding the cause of the phenomenon of life by telling you that you are not what you believe to be, but that you possess possibilities of infinite growth. Your destiny is always reached by an internal direction, which is beatitude, whether your attitude is good, bad, or indifferent. When you clothe yourself in an attitude, its fulfillment does not depend on anything external to you. But when you depend on external laws to determine your attitude, you are at the level of Elijah and John the Baptist. Their teaching was wonderful, but it was of stone and the state was violent. John the Baptist cannot be in the kingdom of heaven. You must surpass his state by becoming consciously internal and disciplining your attitudes. Your destiny is to awaken within yourself as you climb Jacob's ladder to higher and higher levels of your own being. The state of consciousness you desire to express must be acquired by selling all your beliefs in any external power to help you. Once freed from this burden, you will move by faith towards the desired state. In the book of John, Jesus as a teacher says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He then adds, It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Here we see a seemingly taught teaching from the outside, but it is necessary that your belief in any external teacher vanish, for it is only then that the Comforter within you can be found. As your belief in yourself grows, your heart will find peace. There is only one cause, one I am. The Trinity, the unthinkable origin, is God the Father, and in creative expression it is the Son, for imagination springs from consciousness. In universal interpretation, in infinite immanence, in eternal procession, I am God, the Holy Spirit. The true definition of immanence is sooner than now, closer than there. I am. So, what comforter could be more comforting than the knowledge that you do not have to wait for your dreams to come true, they are closer than there, and sooner than now. Let this knowledge be your comforter. If there were a limit to what is contained in an infinite state, it would not be infinite. In the 23rd chapter of Exodus, it is said, Do not boil a young animal in its mother's milk. I tell you that you are doing exactly that when you keep your mind in a negative state. Turn your attention towards what you desire and eliminate all negative states. Replace them with fulfillment and abundance, positive states, and you will no longer continue to simmer your desire in mother's milk. In chapter 14, the human mind, the Bible speaks of the unfinished struggle of the human mind to overcome the natural mind by believing in the reality of the external world. The natural mind controls the sleeping man, while the human mind is God in man, struggling to awaken and gain supremacy over all. The poet Faust understood this when he said, Two souls are within my breast. One yearns for the heavens, the other clings to earth. In the 25th chapter of Genesis, this struggle is told in the story of two sons of Isaac, Esau, and Jacob, the former coming as external, Esau's skin and hair being recognized as your personality, while the smooth Jacob represents your internal human mind. It is told that when their mother Rebecca became conscious of the struggle within her, she asked the Lord who told her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Your external world is known through your critical faculties, but you can always discover the psychological state you reside in by observing your thoughts day by day. Each state has its limits and restrictions from which there seems to be no escape. If you believe that you are the state in which you currently find yourself, you will never be able to leave it. But the story of Esau and Jacob indicates that there is an escape and how to achieve it. Esau exists in your mind as the external world of facts and Jacob is the internal world of imagination. As a father, you have the power to give birthright to either of the two sons. 
always by looking from where you have placed your attention, you call to hide from the external world by turning your attention away from it, fooling yourself by imagining the world as you want it to be. You achieve this by shutting your eyes to the supposed facts of life and turning your thoughts inward. Now focus your thoughts on the feeling of reality until they are as solid as those you know through the reasons of your external senses. When you have done this, Isaac, you will have given your son the right to be born. Your objective world always reflects your internal subjective state. It is impossible to change your external world until you have changed your internal subjective state. By knowing the state you want to occupy, completely absorb yourself in it, like a sponge absorbing water. Lost in the feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, when you open your eyes and Esau's external world returns, you will know that you have taken away his birthright. Even though he was self-deceived in imagining that the state is real, you have given him the power to be born. Only your heavenly Father knows why, for he has ways to bring your desired state to life, and his ways are unfathomable. Now, there is an essence within you that sleeps and must be awakened when you give Jacob the power you gave to Esau. Observe, you will discover that Esau will no longer react violently but will become passive. Then you will know that you have reversed the order. As long as you are aware of being Jacob, you will persist in seeing what you want to see and experiencing, what you want to express. Then your true essence will awaken to the truth that the world belongs to you and everything in it. You are Rebekah spoken of in the Bible, and you constantly bring before you Esau and Jacob, who are always at war with each other. The elder is the world you know through the reasoning of your critical faculties, while the younger is what you know subjectively the person you want to be striving to be born. As long as you look at and accept the external world as the only reality, you will never give birth to your fulfilled desire. You must turn your attention inward and subjectively claim your objective reality. When you read the 25th and 27th chapters of Genesis, remember that all the characters mentioned are there in your mind. Even if you are alone, you always give birth to twins. The world in which you live externalizes your state of consciousness. This state is your first son who must be supplanted by your second son. Through the Bible, you will realize that there is always a second son who replaces the first. Jacob will supplant Esau, Jesus will supplant John the Baptist, and the human spirit will supplant human affairs. When you know what you want, define it as vividly as possible, then send it into your external state. You cannot touch your second son, your precious idea, until you withdraw your attention from any thought of negation and clothe your desire with the skin of reality. In his Ode to a Nightingale, Keats said, My heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk. Having lived the reality of his experience so vividly, when he opened his eyes, Keats asked, Was it a vision or a waking dream? Fled is that music, do I wake or sleep? It is with this intensity that I would ask you to clothe yourself when you feel to be the person you want to be now. Then, clasp your imaginary hands and touch the objects around. Listen with your imaginary ears. See with your imaginary eyes walk in your imaginary world. Feel and sense the objects around. Your creative power can be used for anything, whether a hat or a new tie. I hope you will use it for something noble, like success in your profession, whatever it may be. Now let's look at chapter 38 of Genesis, where the story of Judah and Tamar is told. Judah means praise, and Tamar means a desired state, an oasis of palm trees. Like Tamar, you thirst for your desire. Give it to yourself by going towards your desired state and making it real, becoming one with it. Feel the satisfaction of having your heart filled, and now you will be the woman called Tamar and the man called Judah. You will find another mention of twins in chapter 48 of Genesis. It is the story of Manasseh, which means to forgive, and his brother Ephraim, which means to affirm. One is negation, and the other is affirmation. By turning your attention away from your problem by affirming its solution, the problem is momentarily forgotten. Persist in your affirmation, not repetitively, but by feeling. When you affirm its solution, the problem dies for lack of attention. This teaching is not for the complacent but for the thirsty and hungry human mind to think correctly. 
As we were told in the fifth chapter of Matthew, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Awaken the Jacob in you by observing your thoughts non-critically. Consider yourself as two beings, one who sees with the organs of the senses, and the other who sees through the mind of imagination. The sensory man is a creature of habit. He is dynamic and active, but through daily self-observation he can be brought to a passive state and his power transferred to the man of imagination. There are always two views of the same world, one where you see with your external organs and another where you know only mentally. Your desire is mental, formless. It is your second son who replants your present world. When your power of consciousness turns inward, you have a desire, a desire that consumes you and that you want to realize now. Let this desire dwell in your mind, knowing that its fulfillment rests on feeling. Ask yourself, what feeling would you have if your desire were realized now? Whatever your problem, its solution is within you. Turn your attention to the realization of your desire and never take it lightly. For the moment you feel in a state, you instantly take the fruit of that state unto yourself. I hope you know how to clothe your subjective desire. Think of your desire as Jacob, then clothe it. Its materialization is proportional to your feeling of naturalness. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Humanity cannot enter that kingdom, but your imagination can. When you free yourself from what you are currently attached to, there must be a separation, for only the human spirit is called, and only the human spirit can pass through. That which requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect cannot be realized without that state. Once you have entered the state, do not worry about how it will externalize, for all comes from consciousness. You never create a state. All states have been created before your world was in place. You enter a state, and it simply manifests to yourself. Enter the state of poverty by saying, I am poor, and you will see its proof reflected on your screen of space. You do not generate health, wealth, or happiness. The states are already there, complete and ready for your immediate occupancy. My words are true, but truth by itself can do nothing. It must be applied. Without application, truth is like a lamp without oil. But when applied, truth is a lamp whose oil never diminishes. Remember, there are no accidents. There is no cause other than the imaginative. If an accident is fatal, it is an involuntary suicide. We were told, no one takes my life. I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. An accident is not a force external to individual consciousness. No one knows a man better than the mind of man that dwells within him. A man is simply the total sum of his reactions to life. No one comes into your world unless you call them. You have the power to call anything into life because you are the author of the drama called life. The Bible refers to God as the Father, as the I Am, or as the Light, but these words mean consciousness, which, like an atom, has no age. Consciousness is the living substance that has neither beginning nor end, but simply manifests arrangements by itself. The outer conscious man ages, but the substance of consciousness does not. Before the world was, the I am was, and when it ceases to be, the I am will always be. The outer man can say I am or I will be, but the inner human spirit simply says I am. By persisting in thinking that you already possess your desire until your thoughts become habitual, you will leave yourself with this thought. As long as man is violent, animals must exist. The animal is merely the evidence of man's exteriorized violence. Dinosaurs were heavy beasts with small brains and testified to the awkward state of men in those times. Dinosaurs were not killed, but naturally became extinct. Let man become tamed, and all animals will become sterile. Chapter 15 The Feeling of Self your journey in this world of decay and death begins with your feeling of self, and where you place that feeling, there also shall you live. You can place the feeling of self in the mud of denial or on the loving ground of positive assumption. Your feeling of self is always with you. It is your master or your savior, because wherever you go, so too is the self. In the ninth chapter of Numbers, Moses received instructions from the Lord on how to erect a tabernacle or move through the desert. He was told that during the day a cloud would cover the tabernacle 
and at night it would appear as a pillar of fire. Wherever the cloud ascended, the children of Israel were to travel until it descended, and they were to remain there. It might ascend once a week, once a month or more, but when it ascended the children of Israel had to journey. A tabernacle is a mobile place of worship, covered with skin. You are this temple, this tabernacle, and the Spirit of God resides within you as yourself. A cloud is a garment of water or a psychological truth that covers the self, and what the cloud declares does not move in time but is raised by the self that covers, according to my senses. Currently, I am at the Palace Hotel. Let me raise the cloud of my testimony by removing the feeling of self from the evidence of my senses and moving it to place myself in a predefined state, and my entire world moves with me, enveloping me in the feeling while the cloud covers me as I testify to the state I have just entered at this moment. You can place your feeling of self in an unpleasant state, and unless you lift the cloud that covers you, you will be anchored and unable to change the circumstances of your life. Now, this lifting of the cloud and placing the feeling of self in a more desirable state implies a death because when the cloud ascends, it breaks or kills the cycle of recurrence in which you have been. Movement can only be detected as a change in position relative to another body, and all movement spoken of in Scripture is psychological. All states exist in the psychological world where yourself travels. All you need to do is remove yourself from where it currently is and place it in its predefined state. While you feel quietly seated in your chair, you can lift your cloud by placing the feeling of self in a completely different psychological state. No one can see this movement because yours is a spiritual journey. Even in the state, seek confirmation of your movement in people's faces. They are surprised to see you. They are happy for you, a little jealous. Watch until you see the expressions on their faces. If there is a change in your feeling of self, you will automatically notice an alteration in your usual life expression. During the day, you wear your clothes of truth, the cloud, but as soon as you begin to meditate, the brain becomes luminous. This is the pillar of fire during the night. Remember, I am the truth, and wherever you place your feeling of self, there you shall hold fast. In the 34th chapter of Deuteronomy, it is said that Moses went up to the tops of Moab, and from there to Nebo, from Nebo to Pisgah, where he saw Jericho where he was shown the land destined for him. The word Moses means to draw out. He is not a man but your creative power that can draw out of you any state in which you find yourself. Yourself striking the rock and producing water. The word Moab means mother-father, which is yourself as it is in your current state. Your Moab can say, I am beaten, I am sick, I am impoverished, but Nabo means to prophecy, your desire through the feeling of self. Pisgah means to contemplate. When you enter the desired state, observe your Jericho which will have a fragrant odor. That is what the word Jericho signifies. Having raised your consciousness, remain in your chosen state until you have a satisfactory reaction. A violent reaction produces a terrible smell, while a loving reaction indicates joy. Jericho is not a place in the Near East, but a state that produces the emotion of fulfillment within you. In the fourteenth chapter of the book of John, Jesus speaks to Peter, saying, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, otherwise I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is not one man speaking to another, but the being speaking to the being. You are Jesus, the imagination, telling yourself that there are countless states of consciousness to enter, and you are invited to do and choose the state you want to dwell in. After choosing the state, imagination will go and prepare it for you, so that you can return as yourself, because wherever you hold fast, imagination will also reside, even in the flesh. If you believe in what I have told you, determine it. Otherwise, you and no man can prevent you from entering any state. You have the power to select your state and enter into it by giving it life or leave a state by killing it. The decision and its consequences are yours and yours alone. The day you become an observer of yourself, 
observing your reactions and seeing the observer and the thing observed as two distinct beings, you will know that you can enter anywhere and manifest yourself. You will know that all the mansions of your father's house are yours. I am your conscience, I am with you, and I am the Lord, your God. This teaching of truth concerns the feeling of self because it is only through feeling that change can come. If you continue to have the same reactions, there is no change in your feelings. Your world always shapes your internal assumption. Remember your goal a hundred times during the day, note your thoughts about it, and eliminate all unpleasant ones. If you are not successful, it is because you do not practice this truth and do not apply this law. You are the living temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you. What fellowship does a believer have with an unbeliever? Come out from among them and be separate and I will receive you. Come let us dwell upon the mountain tops. Chapter 16 The Wine of Eternity Human imagination and divine imagination are one and the same thing. They are not two. Your human imagination has the power to turn your water of life into the wine of eternity. This occurs when you elevate your imagination beyond the bounds of limitation. For when imagination is truly free, it can perform miracles. The Bible calls imagination the Savior of man and identifies this wondrous benefactor as the Christ. When Christ is awakened and born in you, your human imagination becomes divine vision called Christ. Your individual imagination is the mediator between the father of all life and the outer world called man. By imagining wealth, it is the human imagination that walks on the water of life and denies the evidence of the senses by proclaiming, I am rich. Its presence acts between God and man. All characters in Scripture live in the mind. When you read the Bible, become the character and ask yourself what state you would be in if you were doing that. When you read about Moses, proclaim that you are him, assume the state of faith. When you read about Abraham, you are Joseph the dreamer and Thomas the skeptic, and you are destined to be Jesus Christ, the awakened imagination. Elevated imagination is the most external garment that man can wear. When you read about someone wearing camel's hair or leather garments, you are reading about someone whose mind is attached to the outside. Their philosophy of life is external and depends entirely on others. In the fifth chapter of Mark, the story is told of an innocent man who was naked, living among the dead, and cutting himself with stones. When the awakened imagination passed, the innocent man cried out, Do not expel me. When asked his name, he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. A non-individualized being is a spiritual and innocent being because he does not know what he does. He is legion because he has countless I ams within him. I am sick, I am poor, I am tired, I am weak and mistreated, to name but a few. Living among the dead and sleeping in the sleep of death, his literal understanding of life and its cause is made of sharp stones. But the spiritual man has a self-determined personal history, a being predetermined in the kingdom of the spirit, he becomes what he desires. When consciousness turns inward, the spirit awakens to its true identity. By rejecting any belief in an external cause, you are clothed in your right thinking and seated at the feet of the one who expels these ideas. The miracle is simply the name given by those who lack faith in the work of faith. The story is told of a man named Jairus, whose daughter was supposed to be dead. Yet, the awakened imagination ignored this thought and said, Do not be afraid, only believe. When he arrived at the house, he asked, Why do you weep? The girl is not dead, she is sleeping. Then he touched the girl and said, I tell you, arise. And immediately she rose up and walked. Then Jesus turned to her parents and said, Give her something to eat. Every state, every desire, every idea is your child, Looking at your desire, it may seem dead to you, the natural man, but your spiritual self knows that the desire is not dead, but asleep, waiting to be touched for its resurrection. With your awakened desire within you through the power of touch, it must be nurtured to be born. You do this by giving it your attention. Let us now return to chapter 5 of the book of John, where the story is about the pool of Bethesda and its five colonnades. The story is told of a sick man waiting for the movement of the water caused by the angel, believing that whoever entered the water first after the movement 
would be healed. When asked if he wanted to be healed, the awakened imagination said, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And at that moment, the man was healed. Taking his bed, he walked away. The word Bethesda means house of mercy, and the pool mentioned here is the consciousness that must be stirred by an angel, a messenger of God. Every idea you hold is that angel disturbing your consciousness. To enter the pool is simply a matter of assumption and agitation. I am is always in the first person, in the present. No one can put you into the pool by affirmation. Even though seemingly powerless, you lie under the five porches or senses when you accept their evidence and refuse to change your consciousness. No one can help you. Who else can be the first in the pool but the being who is your own self? Knowing who you are, rise in the assumption that your desire is fulfilled, healed, and will be. In the 17th chapter of John, he rejoices, saying, I have finished the work which you gave me to do, Father. Glorify yourself in your own being, with the glory that you had before the world was. I have kept them in your name which you have given me, and there is no loss except the son of perdition. For his purpose I consecrate myself, so that they too may be consecrated in truth. For I abide in them, and they in me we are one. The work you have given yourself is to awaken from the dream of life, having assumed the limitations of the flesh. You will awaken to your true identity and become your own glory when your external self becomes passive and your internal self dynamic. Now the son of perdition is the belief in loss. Knowing that all things exist in the human imagination, nothing can be lost. When you realize this truth, you will no longer believe in loss. Having fulfilled the scriptures, the hardest thing to understand is that there is nothing outside of being. Believing that others need to change, working on them, thinking the world would be much better if they were different. Then I awake and sanctify myself, and indeed they are sanctified, for I abide in them, and they in me. We are one. There is no one to change, except the being. When you control your thoughts, and allow only those in line with your idea to flow from you, your world will reform itself in harmony with them. Remember, you cannot be aware of guilt or greatness in another without that guilt or greatness being present in you. Remove the guilt from your own being, place the greatness there, and see your world change and reflect your change in consciousness. In the 16th chapter of Mark, the disciples were asked, Whom do men say that I am, the Son of Man? They answered, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Nah. In the present you might be concerned about what others think of you, but when you have awakened to your true divinity, it won't matter to you what others think. You will know by experience that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood will not reveal this to you, but your Father who is in heaven will. With this knowledge, the keys of the kingdom have been given to you, and what you retain on earth will be retained in heaven, and what you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Having found the answer to the eternal question, Who am I? No man can take this knowledge away from you. This wisdom comes from within. Surrender completely to a psychological experience. If you see yourself as a state in your imagination, you will be raised to that state in the flesh. This being true, your journey goes from innocence to imagination, to experience. You are already the person you wish to be, and tomorrow you will demonstrate it by your fruits. You will be recognized. If today your life is not as you wish, stop blaming someone else. Just continue working on changing your self-feeling and maintain your desired state. Persist, for at the moment of non-reaction, circumstances change. We rise by an energy others call effort, because it takes energy to act and react all day. Remember your goal by constantly identifying with it. Allow your reactions to flow from your goal. Seek a greater and deeper understanding of what you now believe you understand. I have confidence in everyone who aims to become greater. Do not limit yourself because of a book. Stop believing that a man can write a book that is the final truth. Start concluding. No one can grow without first having been small. A different attitude is the solution to every problem. 
By your new direction, your attitude, you escape from what you had wrapped yourself in. There is no one to change but yourself. So begin by changing yourself today. Now, Luke was talking about you when he made this statement. When their eyes were opened, they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. When yourself is awakened, you will find what you were seeking, and the belief in a power external to being will disappear. In Francis Thompson's poem, The Hound of Heaven, he says, How have I outrun him under the stars and under the arches of the years, fled him under the labyrinthine ways of my own mind, to find at last that he was my own being? Men's eyes are blind, having been constantly chased by the hound of heaven. He cannot believe in the non-historicity of the Bible, but continues to cling to his little beliefs, even if he doesn't know what to do with them. People don't seek the truth, they only seek support for their opinions. But I tell you, do not believe that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set man against his father, daughter against her mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, because the enemies of man are those of his own household. When the truth comes, it places man at war with himself, because he discovers that he can no longer tolerate what he previously believed. Start now, and quietly listen to the words you want to hear. Take a new direction. You can change the course of your life and free yourself from the prisons of your mind. You may see yourself better by looking at the face of another, but you cannot judge one who has not yet awakened from the dream of life. Living in a psychological animal world, one reacts mechanically and automatically, like a machine. Awaken, O sleeper, as it is said in the book of Ephesians. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This awakening and rising come with an inner development, for the Bible is your autobiography. It is you who inspired the prophets to record their visions, and it is you who fulfills their prophecies in a continuous present experience. When you read the Bible, immerse yourself mentally, study its message, and your understanding will deepen as you journey through life. The Bible teaches self-help. Do not seek an external leader, seek only within yourself. If someone offers to do for you what you can do yourself, decline and go to Christ, the creative power of God within you, which is your life, your light of the world. By changing your way of thinking, Christ will change your world. The ground spoken of in scriptures is the human spirit. It is in the psychological mind that the idea of the kingdom of heaven has been implanted. Even in a state of dreaming, false doctrines have been added within you, called tares. They grow alongside the wheat and will be harvested. That is why you must be selective and clear out the weeds by killing any belief in a power external to the mind. One who is satisfied, content with their social and financial position, has no hunger for growth. If you are content, your life will not change, for you lack thirst or hunger for a higher level of consciousness. You are the only one to satisfy or not the hunger that comes to you, but you have not begun the work you've set for yourself until you start observing your thoughts without judgment. And when you do, you will discover that you are not as true, honest or courageous as you thought. Tonight, choose a future to work on, and tomorrow be an observer. Ask yourself, Am I maintaining this in the present? Is this what I want? This is how my friend wishes to be perceived, so I limit myself. Then, act in your imagination, for imagination is passive when asleep and allows falsehood to take the throne. Observe your thoughts, claim your throne, and consciously allow your human imagination to control your world. Your human imagination, once activated, will awaken like a newborn child born amidst violence, in a manger where wild beasts feed. It will grow in wisdom and power, and your external being will become passive and powerless. But you must be an observer, and vigilant with your thoughts to bring your external being to passivity. Only then will you know what it means to be in the world, but not of it. The purpose of this teaching is to awaken the Christ sleeping within man, by dreaming of different states of being, and bringing it back into the circle of humanity's consciousness, where man is self-aware. Once you are aware of your true being, you will no longer condemn the sleeping man. You will know they are automatic machines, unaware of their actions. Your desires are not subjective and intangible things, but solid and real. Begin awakening the Christ within you, 
by clothing your subjective desires in objective reality. I promise you that the day you do this, it will become a reality in your world. Have an objective and you will no longer deceive yourself. Work on it within you. Become extremely observant and honest with yourself and watch the energy that was flowing toward these negativities flow toward your grand objective. Perhaps your objective is to become a great master, not because you want to impose your will on others, but because you want to awaken in others what you have awakened in yourself. Awakening begins when you feel a separation, a division between the natural world and your spiritual imagination, where everything is possible. It is this spiritual you that clothes your subjective state in reality, changing the feeling of self to direct your life internally and escape the pressure of your current state, regardless of what happens. By adopting the idea that the problem is solved, you shift from the problem to its solution. This change in attitude is called bliss. In other words, it is being what you want to be by assuming you already are. When you consciously know what you want, dress yourself in a new concept of being, extracting yourself from the evidence of the senses and placing it where you want to be. Through this awareness or bliss, you have journeyed from one state to another, and I, if elevated, will lead all men with me. Once you have elevated yourself to the new state, stay there. Do not return to what your senses testify to. Remain in your desire until a different world is established. Any change in the feeling of self automatically produces changes in the external world. Therefore, you must learn to die daily to your old beliefs. The phrase, those who lose their life for my sake will find it, means letting go of everything you know now. If you lose it, you will find yourself clothed in a higher level of being, which will then cause a new expression in your world. When you go in a direction, the journey happens in the mind. A physical journey may follow, but the journey must be undertaken from within first. Where you are psychologically right now is where you are. A luminous being lives at the top of the mountain, and the human imagination, when fully controlled, is personified as a being called Jesus Christ. As long as you are violent, you are asleep. Awaken to the spiritual being by observing your actions and reactions to life, and you will lose the impulse to retaliate. What happens to you here is not important, but how you react to what happens to you. Your reactions define you. They indicate where you stand because you attract your life in its smallest details. The Bible does not teach reincarnation. Its central teaching is the rebirth of consciousness to higher levels. You must be born of water and spirit, not only of water alone. Only a man born of the Spirit can reach the highest level of being called the Kingdom of Heaven. In these series of readings, you have received psychological instructions on how to work on yourself. Your mind has been cleansed of certain errors, baptized and born of water. But unless this truth is applied, you will not be born of the Spirit. The word Mary means water. Christ, the self within you, is born of water and the sacred Spirit. The external being cannot receive instructions. It is literal and takes things literally. So other than stones, the upright man is aware of being the man he wants to be, while the foolish man robs himself by not proclaiming his desire. Every time you see a man as less than what he wants to be, you have robbed him of the state necessary to externalize it. Do not be like the pagan who, through vain repetitions, expects to reach God's ear. Instead, when you pray, look inward and shut the door. Your Father, who sees you in secret, will reward you openly. You have nothing else to do but change the feeling of self. Shut the door to the external world and feel yourself in the state your friend desires with a planned program. Veil it and speak to it from the premise that he is already that person. Keep shut the door of reason and logic and walk by faith in what you have heard and seen in secret. You will be rewarded openly, and so it will be. The Bible was written by the consciousness of the circle of humanity, the circle into which you enter, at the moment of your awakening. The Bible is divine instruction with countless interpretations. It is evidence of the development of your understanding, and the more it grows, the deeper your understanding becomes. Even if man gets entangled in conditions or states, the being he truly is, I am. Whatever man consents to will manifest in his world. You can accept as a fact what your reason denies, or you will always bow to what reason dictates.
The same consciousness that produces health produces sickness, wealth or poverty, everything you allow yourself to be conscious of. What you affirm as truth will manifest. When you know the spiritual being within you, you will gain supremacy of imagination and subject all things to it. Every knee must bow to imagination. Consider, we are transformed in its very image. You can contemplate a given situation and make it so natural that you are transformed in its image. When you feel all imagination becoming natural, divinity is not divided. Instead, all are but projections of the one. You are told to love your neighbor as yourself because there is no other. Sanctify the self and not another. Working on others, you will not change them, but by changing yourself, others will change. Seek confirmation of your ideas, and you will ceaselessly grow. All texts are made by men and not inspired from above. Cling to them, and you will stay at their level. Believe in the self, trust in your human imagination, and you will grow in knowledge and stature. And as you grow, diminish your old beliefs. My ideas regarding the historicity of the Bible are not original. The Biblical Encyclopedia was published in 1888, sponsored by the University of Oxford. It took 20 years for 127 brilliant minds of all religious tendencies to complete it. These men who knew ancient languages concluded after intensive research that the Bible, from cover to cover, was a mythological allegory. Another wonderful book is Smith's Bible Dictionary, published in 1860 in four volumes. They discovered that the writers of the Bible used a phallic framework that aligns with their psychological truths, and when their eyes are opened, they will know it. To know is to have union and become what is contemplated. Then it vanishes from their sight. In the third chapter of the first epistle of John, he tells us, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, and we are. The world knows us not because it knew him not. As children of God, we do not yet appear to be what we will be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who hopes in him purifies himself because he is pure.